Hello. Welcome to Pastor Roby Podcast, a hub of information on living your best life, leadership, success relationship and faith. Here is Pastor Roby. Hello, I'm Chikudu Mobi. Welcome to my podcast if you're listening and welcome to my blog if you're watching. I want to talk to you about a subject today that I call hand over the button. Hand over the button. There is this subconscious attitude we usually have after we have prayed. And probably others fasting to our prayers. You know, before I reveal this attitude, let me say this. We need to put faith in God and his word, not in our works or our actions. That being said, the attitude I want to speak to you about about today is this attitude that in parenthesis god god over to you now i've prayed and fasted go do your job no 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 it is not over to god after you've prayed it is over to you yes you after prayers you just handed the button to you <laughs> yes you come along with me on this journey <laughs> Welcome back. See, the Bible may declare that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness and has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly place. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 talks about that. Ephesians 1.3 talks about that. So God has already done everything he needs to do for us through the death of Jesus Christ. See, the race is fixed. We are already winners. We are more than conquerors. But we still have to run the race. And not to make it obvious that it is actually fixed. Now, see. See how it works. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, right? We briefly hand over the button to him to do the heavy lifting for us, to pray for us, to help our shortcoming, to help our infirmities, right? One of the ways he does this is by helping us download insights, blueprints, plans, which we need to put into work to get the answer to our prayers. We download strategies, we download steps, we download anything that will give us an edge. Remember, it is a fixed race. God shows us favor because he has chosen us. See, I am the chosen and so are you if you are saved by the blood of Jesus. So once these prayers are sent up, a download is necessary. Every upload necessitates a download. The button is handed back to us as we should. To, so we don't need to fold our hands after prayers thinking the solution will happen magically. No, it won't. Because we live in this world, we have a part to play in making things happen. Uh, God will not come down from heaven and make it work. Man will make it work because he has given earth to man. So it simply means that it is time for us to act in line with our faith, in line with what we prayed about, in line with what we believe will happen after we prayed. It is time to put to work the things the Holy Spirit has downloaded into our heart when we prayed in tongues. I'll give you some guidelines as to what to do now you are done praying to ensure that you end this year triumphant and victorious on all sides. I'm going to give you the guidelines. At the end, I'm going to tell you a testimony that will explain all those guidelines. So wait for the testimony. So first on my list, is your download folder. Every computer has a download folder where it stores files downloaded from the net. Computers store a lot of files from your activities online. A lot of these files are known as cookies. And these cookies are like footprints from the websites you visited. And some of these websites use these cookies to even track you. That is why there's a lot of stuff now going on with privacy uh, policies and all that. They actually act as a backdoor for these sites to track you. So these cookies make it easier to load that page when next you go back to that site. So read carefully as I'm about to describe what happens when you pray in the spirit using this computer analogy. I'm going to use it to explain 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, which reads, But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. The his spirit that is the Holy Spirit. For the spirit, which is our human spirit, Search at all things, yea, the deep things of God. The internet is a hub of information, like I said, and knowledge. 
when we get our, when we turn on our computer and browse and search for something, we ping the internet with those words. Uh, search engines like Google or Binge does does that. They help locate sites where the keywords that you're getting into the search bar are found. In the same way, when we pray in the spirit, our human spirit searches the internet of God, and that internet of God is the Holy Spirit. So. As you're praying, our human spirit is praying, and the Holy Spirit is also helping us to pray, searching for clues, instructions to um, answers, rather, to our prayers. We have been thought that it is the Holy Spirit that does the searching, because King James Version of the Bible puts the S in the second spirit in capital letter, thus confusing us to believe that it is the Holy Spirit doing the searching. But it's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God, and God already knows all things. So he cannot be searching for what he already knows. God is omniscient. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. He is the, actually the hub of, the, of all knowledge. He's actually in this analogy, the internet. So when we pray in the Spirit, it is our human spirit that is pinging the internet, pinging the Holy Spirit. Our human spirit pings our request, and the Holy Ghost pongs back the answer. <laughs> this is sending information back to your human spirit. See, a lot of people will um, find this a little confusing because of the belief that once you pray, God will do it, which is true. It is also true, and it's very true, especially in the case of angelic intervention or where angelic intervention is needed, like divine healing and all that. Angels are sent to perform a surgery or replace a body part and uh, do what man cannot do. That is true in that case. But there are other exemptions where your miracle needs to come from a man or a woman physically. Uh, these are channels God uses to answer your prayers. And they will need to obey instruction from God for that miracle or that answer to your prayer to come to you. This is because God will not come down from heaven to earth to do it. He still needs humans. He still needs a medium. He still needs a channel to bring those answers to you. So the way he gets men to answer your prayers is to speak to them and get them to obey his instruction. Um, but most times, you know, they don't really obey that instruction. Like, like um, if God tells you to give some money to somebody, he say, yes, you do it. That's the Holy Spirit. At times you forget. At times you change your mind. Though God has answered that person's prayer, but because of the man factor, that answer to that person is either delayed or aborted. Do you understand that? Okay. But at times, the man required to answer that your prayer is you. So you need to download the instruction in the place of prayer, then get off from that place of prayer, follow those instructions, and go answer your prayer. That's why when I heard a man of God say that whenever he prays, he gets up and answers his prayer. In the beginning, I didn't understand, but now I do understand it. That is why you shouldn't pray without a notepad, because as you pray, the Holy Spirit will download, will pong into your human spirit answers to what you're praying for. Habakkuk 2, 2 talks about it. So never forget that prayer is a dialogue and not a monologue. Now, secondly, have unshakable foundation laid with the word of God. All, God. all of God's promises to you are yea and amen. In him, there is no shadow of turning. God cannot lie. Take hold of the word of God that you are believing for or take hold of the word of God regarding what you believe for. Refuse to let go of it. You stand by it, you confess it and you believe it. Thirdly, Always realize that you have divine forces backing you up. Every action you take, request from God to send his angel to do the needful. You are not alone in this process. He already promised to go along with you. Those angels might need to go influence people to get them to do what they ought to do for you. Fourthly, constantly confess the word over that situation. Speak to the mountain to move. Don't speak to God anymore. Speak to the mountain. Create that which you want to see by speaking. Anytime you become silent, you have licensed the kingdom of darkness to come out and play in your vineyard. Don't let them plant tars in your vineyard. Don't let those tars grow. Weed them out with your words and with your words as well. Plant good seeds and that you want to see and you will definitely see it. So in the fifth point I want to make, I'm hurrying is that keep the arm of faith constantly outstretched. Never switch up your faith. Be in a state of constant expectation for that miracle. 
Don't expect the opposite to happen. Neither expect failure or disappointment. Expect that what you have confessed and prayed about will, will come to you. That miracle will come to you. So what you need to do, you need to be on the constant lookout for that miracle. You need to expect it constantly. Like a magnet, you are pulling that miracle towards yourself with constant expectation, with raising your hopes. Now, sixthly, never let praise depart from your heart and your lips. Be filled with thanks for what God is said to what God is said to do. God is incorrupt. He cannot take praises for what he, you are yet to receive. So as you praise him for what you are yet to receive, God gets uncomfortable and he will work hardest and instruct his angels to work hardest till you receive your miracle. Now, finally, let the peace of God that passeth all understanding fill God your heart and your mind. Be at rest, be unperturbed, be worry-free, be cool, be calm, be collected. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, it is time for action. When you act on those instructions, you received in the place of prayer, the grace from the prayers will come upon the action. Go, answer your prayer because God has done it for you. So you go and collect. I promise to tell you a story. I remember when um, we were building church, we've done the foundation and somehow we suspended it. And um, I've been praying about it, trusting God, talking to God, speaking to him about it. And I remember one day, the place of prayer, it just flashed into my heart. It is time. It is time. Now is this time. Go complete the building. Then I came to church the next Sunday. And as I was preaching, the Holy Spirit reminded me. And he said, see, announce it to the people. Remember the confession. Speak it. And uh, as I was preaching, I was preaching on something else, but I was struggling in my spirit. And I just blurted it out. Hey, guys, we are going to move into church at the end of next month. And if I remember clearly, I think it was about two months or two and a half months from the day I declared it. Nobody said amen because we just did foundation. And the foundation we did was not even slapped. We just dug the points for the pillars. Um, humanly speaking, Pastor, I'm not sure you got it right. Uh, you're too exuberant with this, your faith. Calm down. And I repeated it. The guys want to say amen. And some one or two people just uh, reluctantly said amen. To cut a long story short, we didn't have up to 100,000 Naira which is about um, 200 pounds, 200 pounds, yeah, in their church account. And we are embarking on a project worth hundreds of millions. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So after that, you get what the Holy Spirit told me. Say, hey, get up the next morning, which was a Monday morning, get to site and ask for workers to come. And let work start. That if truly you believe what you just said and what I told you in the place of prayer, you need to act on it. So I dressed up, got early, got to the church site the morning morning, and I was giving order, asking for workers, let them get workers, get materials, and we're all getting this. In quotes on credit, because we didn't pay for it, though we are supposed to pay for it, but there's something you must pay for. At the end of every day, that is your, your your laborers. And we didn't have money for that. But we started with the money we had. But what I noticed that while I was on site, people would come and say, Pastor, I'm sowing this seed. I'm giving this throughout that week, throughout that month. People that were not even members of the church will come for service. One wrote a check, or I think a million, and put a note in um in the envelope i say hey i'm not a member of this church i don't know you i won't give you my number i won't give you any of my details but i heard that you are building and i want to support it we got several checks like that even people in church that you thought that will not give anything we are giving 
outside as well pushing in funds into the project do you know why because i was answering my prayers i didn't fold my hands i said oh god you've already given me the word that this place will be built let the money start entering the account he told me step into sight and act as if you have hundreds of millions in your account and i acted as if i had money which i didn't and as i was acting in faith the money that i need the resources that i need found me. this is the way it works go put this in process and your life will be the same take the battle go answer your prayer and i'll see you in the next time. Subscribe to his blog on www.pastorobi.com. You can also donate to support his radio show on the website. You can support his podcast on anchor.fm slash pastorobi. Check Pastor Obi at Pastor C. Obi on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. He will love it if you leave a review for him on this platform. Thank you God bless you.